At-Tahara. The book of purification, At-Tahara. At-Tahara قسمين. So Tahara is two types. Tahara tibatin wa Tahara zahir. The purification of your inner self and the purification of that which is apparent. Batin min ash-shirk. So you purify yourself from a shirk. And also innovations and sinning. And as for the physical purification, then it is two types. So first there is a tahara purification from al hadath and so first of all there is tahara from al hadath and al hadath is major and minor a person purifies himself from major hadath through al ghusl and a person purifies himself from minor hadath or minor impurity through wudu and then there is and then there is purifying oneself from a najasa, physical impurities. And so you have to purify or cleanse your clothing and your body and also the place in which you are praying from these physical impurities. So purification is done using water and this is the base and there are two types of water that which is pure and that which is impure or a person can use sand or soil uh, for purification and this is secondary and this is through a tayammum so in the book of Tahara, which matters which will we study? نعم. من يقول لي? Who knows? نعم. نأخذ طهارة الباطن من الشرك. We will study the inner purification and this is purifying yourself from shirk. إذا لابد تطهر باطنك. So you have to purify your inner self from a shirk. ثم تطهر الظاهر. And then you have to purify your physically you have to purify yourself. أو يقال طهارة حسية وطهارة معنوية الطهارة المعنوية من الشرك الحسية حدث وخبث يعني نجاسة. أو we can say physical purification and this is from حدث and النجاسة physical impurities and then spiritual purification and this is purification from الشرك. نعم. طيب. الحدث قال عندنا حدث أكبر هذا يرتفع بالاقتصاد. So we said that there are two types of hadath, which is a state of impurity. Major impurity, this is purified through ghusl. Man yajib alayhi al-iqtisal? Mata yajib al-ghusl? When is ghusl obligated upon a person? Naam, man yajib? When? Islam al-kafir. When a non-Muslim accepts Islam. Maut ghayr al-shaheed. Ay insan ya mut Muslim la bud yugassal wa kaffan illa al-shaheed. When a person, when a Muslim dies, any death except martyrdom. Any Muslim who dies except for the martyr has to be shrouded and before this washed. إذا طهرت المرأة من الحيض والنفاس لا بد تغتسل. And also when a woman is into the state of purity after her menses or her periods, then she has to perform ghusl. If there is a discharge of semen from a person who is awake or he was sleeping, and then of course, intimate relations. How does a person perform ghusl? So there are two ways of performing ghusl. There is the most perfect manner and this is encouraged. And then there is the minimum way of performing ghusl and this is the easiest. The easiest manner of performing ghusl is that first of all you make an intention in your heart. You mention the name of Allah. And then you ensure that water it touches every part of your body and under and your hair as well 
along with rinsing your mouth and your nose. And then with this, and the, with this level of ghusl, a person can then and then can pray salah without needing to perform wudu. And then there is the second manner of performing ghusl. And this is the most perfect manner. Firstly, a person begins with washing his private parts, the front and the back. And he makes the intention in his heart. He mentions the name of Allah. He, wash, he washes his hands. And then he rinses his mouth and his nose and he blows out the water from his nose. And then he... And then he washes his face along with his beard, separating the strands of hair in his beard. And then he washes his right arm. And then he washes his left arm. And then he washes his head and he covers it, it with water and his ears. And then he washes the right hand side of his body. And then he washes the left hand side of his body. And then he washes his right foot and then his left foot. And then a person now can pray with, it, pray with this. As for the minor state of impurity, then this is purified through wudu. What are those matters which invalidate wudu? Firstly, firstly, any discharge from the private parts, the front or the back, from the men or the women, any type of discharge, it invalidates a person's wudu. Whether it's urine, or whether it's feces, or whether it is small, uh, نعم. حصة. نعم. small stones, دم, ريح, blood, passing of wind. The point is that any discharge from the front or back private parts invalidates wudu. And uh, and the second thing which invalidates a person's wudu is when a person loses consciousness. Whether this is through sleep or being intoxicated. Or, uh, if a person loses sanity or sleeps or faints, or becomes unconscious or becomes intoxicated, anything which makes a person's senses or uh, loses consciousness, then this negates wudu. For example, the brother over here, if he was becoming tired or in slumber, you say to him, can you still sense and perceive around you? He's saying that I can still perceive and hear everything around me. Just a little bit of tiredness. This person, his wudu is valid. And then this person said, said he was complete deep sleep such that he saw that he had traveled to Manchester. This person, his wudu is batil, invalid. And then the third matter which invalidates a person's wudu is eating camel meat. The fourth, the fourth matter which invalidates a person's wudu is apostasy. May Allah save us. Because this invalidates every action. What are the conditions of wudu? So the conditions of wudu are firstly a person being upon Islam and a person having sanity. And also mental maturity by which a person is able to differentiate between different matters. So when it comes to wudu, puberty is not a condition for the validity of wudu. Rather, it is mental maturity. 
يخطئ كثير من من يترجم يقول إنه في التمييز يقول هو البلوغ هذا خطأ نعم. And so many translators they make a mistake when they translate تمييز as being puberty it is not puberty. والنية محل القلب والتلفظ بها بدعة. And also from the conditions of wudu is niya and its place is in the heart and to verbalize that niya is an innovation. ولا بد أن تكون النية في كل الوضوء ما يستطيع أن يقطع النية في وسط الوضوء. And the niya of wudu has to remain throughout all the wudu. It's not correct for between the in the process of wudu a person leaves the intention. انقطاع موجب الوضوء يعني ما يستطيع توضع ويخرج منه ريح مثلا أو لا بد نقول انتظر حتى ينتهي خروج الريح بعد هذا توضع. نعم. And also the ceasing or the stoppage of that which invalidates wudu, meaning if a person is passing wind, he cannot make wudu. Rather, he has to wait until he has finished, and then he begins to make wudu. لا بد إذا كان ناقض الوضوء موجب للاستنجاء أو الاستجمار لا بد يستنجى أو يستجمر قبل الوضوء. مثاله الآن هو في دورة المياه هناك في الداخل أكرمكم الله بال ما يستطيع توضع حتى يقصل الذكر. نعم يطهر المكان. نعم. And also, if that which necessitated or that which invalidated wudu requires istinja or istijmar. For example, if a person was in the toilet and he was urinating, before he makes wudu, he has to wash himself through istinja or istijmar. نعم. إزالة طهورية الماء وإباحته. يعني ما يمكن يتوضع بماء نجس أو يتوضع يسرق ماء حتى يتوضع. نعم. And also from the conditions of wudu is that the water has to be pure and the water has to have been obtained legally. So, a person cannot make wudu with water which is impure and neither can a person steal water to make wudu. إزالة ما يمنع وصول الماء إلى البشرة يعني مثلا يعمل في طلاء الجدران أو على يد عجين لا يستطيع أن يتوضع حتى يزيل هذا لأنه لا بد أن يصل الماء إلى أعضاء الوضوء نعم. And also from the conditions of wudu is removing anything which prevents water from touching the skin. For example, if a person is painting or if there's a person and that person has dough on their hands, firstly, that has to be removed because that prevents water from reaching the skin. Once that has been removed, then he performs wudu. المرأة بعض النساء يضع أشياء هنا على أظافر تسمى عندنا في اللغة العربية أو في يعني عرف الناس يسموها مناكير يعني جمع منكرات فلا يصح والله هكذا تسمى مناكير فلا يصح أن تتوضع حتى تزيل هذه المنكرات حتى يكون وضوء صحيح نعم نعم يسمى مناكير عندنا ما أدري إيش يسموها منتم نعم مناكير يعني منكرات هكذا يسموها تقصد الملون تقصد الأظافر بويا بويا تضع هنا المرأة بس أظافر صناعية لا مو الأظافر بويا فانيش أي بويا نعم um, so, so the point is that anything which prevents water from reaching the skin, then that has to be removed. Like, for example, a nail varnish. If it prevents water from reaching the nails, then it has to be removed first. How does, how does a person form wudu? Meaning, what is the correct description of forming wudu? First of all, يسمي بسم الله. First of all, he has to have the intention in his heart and then he mentions the name of Allah. And then he washes his hands. And then with a single handful of water, a person rinses his mouth and his nose and then uh, dispels the water from his mouth and also from his nose. لكن هواء يستنفع. نعم. And he uh, rinses with the right hand and then he blows the water from his nose with his left hand. مرة أو مرتين أو ثلاث مرات. And this can be done once or twice or thrice. يغسل الوجه. And also washing his face. من منبت الشعر المعتاد أو من حنا جهبها إلى 
from the top of the from the top of the forehead where hair normally grows to the chin ومن شحمة الأذن إلى شحمة الأذن مع ما استرسل من اللحية and from the tip of the ears to the tip of the ears and also that which is seen from the beard مرة أو مرتين أو ثلاث مرات and the washing of the face in this manner can be done once twice or thrice ثم يغسل لابد جميع اليد الكف هنا هنا ركن ليس مثل الأول سنة هنا يغسل الكف مع المرفق دون أن يشرع في العضد اليمنى ثم اليسرى and then after this a person washes his whole arm and what we mean by the whole arm is beginning from the fingertips and the hands the back of the hands all the way to and including the elbow without washing the upper arm and with regards to the washing of the hands in the first instance that was mustahab that was recommended here washing the hands it is a rukan it is a fundamental pillar and obligation of wudu ثم يمسح الراس لا يغسل يبدا بمقدمه الراس الى قفاه ثم يعود مره اخرى يدخل السباحه في صماخي اذنيه ويمسح بالابهام ظاهرهما and then after this he wipes over his head and he wipes and he's not wash so he takes wet hands he begins from the top of the forehead and he wipes to the to to his neck and then he returns the hand to where he began them from and then with his index finger he wipes the inner part of his ear and with his thumb he wipes the back of his ear now فروض الوضوء ستة ها طيب رجلين يغسل الرجل اليمنى مع الرجل اليسرى مع الكعبين دون ان يشرع في الساق and then the last part of wudu is for the person to wash his feet and that is he begins with the right foot first to the ankle and then the left foot to the ankle without washing the shins and then he says the dua which has been rated from the prophet and this is encouraged the obligations of wudu are six Firstly, washing the face along with rinsing the mouth and the nose and blowing the water out. And washing the whole arm to the elbow, to and including the elbow. And then third, wiping over the head along with the ears. And fourth, washing the feet to and including the ankles. Fifth, to do this in the correct sequence. And then, so doing wudu in the correct sequence but without any delay between the various parts so for example if a person began wudu then after a short while a phone call came from Sheikh Ibrahim and he begins conversing with him no rather it has to be done without any unnecessary delay now we come to tayammum tayammum sifat tayammum the description of tayammum first he has to have the intention in his heart Bismillah. then he verbalizes and mentions the name of Allah then after this he places his hands upon the earth meaning upon sand or soil or clay or stones or rocks جدار سيراميك لا خشب لا as for that which has been manufactured then no like for example carpets or ceramic or walls or wood no ضربة واحدة بدون تفريج الأصابع بدون ضربة واحدة and he places his hands upon the earth once without separating between his fingers like this يمسح الوجه and then he wipes over his face وظاهر الكف اليمنى and then the upper uh, the outer part of the right hand and then the left when does a person perform tayammum when when there is an absence of water 
عند عدم القدرة على استعمال الماء مثل برد شديد أو مرض مثلا نعم Or when there is water However a person is unable to utilize water For example if it was extremely cold And if he feared an illness due to using the water Then he makes تيمم نعم والله أعلم صلى الله عليه وسلم محمد وعلى صحبه وسلم جزاكم الله خير